All right, what's up my brothers? We've got a sponsor request here from a American who has a Chinese wife that has turned his home into the most uncomfortable place in his life. Let's just dive right into this and see what we got going on and offer some feedback to it. So apparently he's been following the channel for three years. He's in his mid thirties, six figure income. And again, my Chinese wife has turned my home into the most uncomfortable place in my life. I know that I should leave, but I have held out for my son because she had threatened to take him away to China. Our relationship started when she quickly expressed that she had no interest in being physical with me until she came back from a business trip and was all over me. It's a bad start. You do not want to get involved with women that aren't enthusiastic to be with you to begin with. Anyway, she comes back from her business trip and is all over him like a fat kid on cake. Red flags number one and two. Shortly after that, she ended up being pregnant. And yes, I tested to make sure it was mine. Good man, that's a smart move. I took advice from my family, proposed and married her before the kid was born. Okay, and then you put after that green card question mark. What do you think? Since then we moved to a new state. I doubled my income, but she was never happy. She got a job of her own and had hoarded all of her money ever since. Finances are extremely contested and she will only ever use her money for things that she approves of, mostly sending it to her family or travel or on her terms. She still wasn't happy. I built a new home. Still wasn't happy. Somewhere around here was when I first retained an attorney, but didn't execute because of the above. The list goes on, cars, etc. Okay, so he's improved her life dramatically. She certainly got a pretty good deal out of this. And she even forced having a second kid with threats that she would find somebody else to do it with if I wouldn't. Wow, hmm. Red flag number seven. I truly feel death by a thousand paper cuts, as every time I concede to keep up with the pace, hoping to make things better, it always ends up being at the expense of my values and would further entrap me in this life. At this point, we are over one year with no intimacy, connection, or positive feedback about anything in our lives, and almost every confrontation escalates into fights, but everything and nothing ever gets resolved. From what I know, it's following textbook narcissism combined with contempt. If you didn't watch it, there's a video on contempt on my channel. I'll put a card up on the top right. You can check that out afterwards. He goes on to say, how do I wrap my head around breaking the cycle? I've had years to twist this and keep myself here being this long. My biggest challenge is the kids, fear of the divorce system here, losing half my time with them, not being able to protect them, being financially thrashed in the process, and losing many freedoms in the next two decades. I feel I have more influence over my future by staying together, more involvement over my kids' lives, and once things are contested, I think it will be a bigger challenge. You're probably right. I have done enough math to know that if I keep conceding for private schools, homes, cars, etc., I won't be able to afford to leave. Then travel opening back up, risks can escalate quickly. Okay, let's hop on the road and have a little discussion about our friend's crazy Chinese wife. And guys, just for frame and reference here, I've dealt with a lot of these over the years and this Chinese wife story is pretty common. You know, the dragon wife, the dragon lady, whatever you want to call her. I don't know if it's exclusive to Chinese culture, but a lot of white dudes end up getting wrapped up with Chinese gals. And actually, it's not always Chinese. I've seen this in other Asian cultures too. And they get turned into these like pussified former versions of themselves. Yes men, you know, if you will. They're required to uh, generate a, a stamp that says yes on it and everything she says, yes, 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 yes. You just stamp that shit all day long. And that's not genuine burning desire. That is not a good life. You're essentially spending your entire life trying to make an unhappy person happy. And it ain't no way to live, my friend. Uh, now, you linked your social. I took a look at your life as it's held out to the public. And as always, it's always rainbows and butterflies. You know, happy pictures of happy children, park, nice picture of the home with the cars in front, all the standard stuff, a random picture of her peppered here and there. And anybody that would be checking that out that's in the public that might work with this guy that might come across him and, and follow him would just think, oh, this guy's got an awesome life. Maybe I should go find a woman like that and create a family like this too. And we'll all, you know, it'll all be tickety-boo and fine. But that's the reality of social media. It's a highlight reel too, right? So people only are able to put their best foot forward in anything that sucks or isn't fun for them it's hidden and revealed in a situation like this. So what would I do in a situation like this? Well, first of all, the lesson here for the younger guys that are contemplating getting married, having children, maybe like the idea of being a passport bro. Have you heard the passport bro story before where these North American guys or these Western guys think that it's a good idea to go to a country in Asia or South America? 
They might have a thing for Latinos. They might have a thing for Asian women. And then they go and do this exact same thing that our friend is doing over here. And they often end up in the exact same scenario. You see, if you don't get your head screwed on right and you don't understand what women respond to, what they don't respond to, how to game women, how to live your life as an unplugged man, as an unplugged alpha, as I would put it, as it's described in my book, then you're gonna run into problems like this. It doesn't matter where you get the woman from, you're always gonna run into problems like this if you don't know how to vet for red flags and know how to hold frame. I don't think that our friend here was aware of any of this stuff before he met this gal because I can tell by the pictures, the kid is older than three years and he said he's only been following my channel for three years. So these problems had begun years and years before that. So unfortunately I don't have a time machine to put you back in my friend, but that's the lesson for the younger guys. Vet, vet, vet. Make sure you use the red flags that I described in my book. If you don't have the book, it's fine. You can get the red flags for free by opting into my email list. It's pinned below in the top comment. And make sure you understand what they are and the significance of them when you're dealing with women because a lot of guys wanna have a family and children and they can potentially end up in an environment or a scenario exactly like our friend here where their home, as he described at the very beginning, has become the most uncomfortable place in his world. And your house should be a place of comfort. You should come home from work after chasing excellence, putting a dent in the universe, doing things of significance with your life to a warm, loving wife who is enthusiastic about being in your arms and laying with you in a bed, right? Who's a great mom, who's a great wife, who helps, you know, make uh, your life a better place. This guy's life is a disaster and he's done all the right things. He's doubled his income, he's bought the nice house, he has the nice cars in the driveway. I've seen all the photographs, it looks like he's done exactly what he's been told to do. And again, they tell women different things for men. They tell women, you do what's right for you, girl. But they'll tell guys, you do what's right, period. Now, back to this guy's problem. What would I do? I'd get out. I'll be honest with you. Now, it's gonna require some strategic planning. You've already moved states, so moving states doesn't seem to be a problem for you. What I would do is I would take a look at the United States and find out which state has the best laws for fathers. There are lots of resources out there online if you just start Googling. There's organizations and uh, groups and nonprofits that rank all the states by uh, friendliness to fathers in divorce or in custodial issues and stuff like that. And by default, the first thing I would do, don't, don't tell her why you're moving to the state, just tell her you're gonna buy her a nicer house or you got a, a better job. I assume you can work remotely by the way you described your job. Either that or remote work will either be required or you'll have to get a new job to do this. But I would move to a state that's friendly to fathers if you're not already in one right now. So that would be the first step because if you're gonna get divorced, like you already know, her immediate strategy is, well, I'll just leave the country and take the children with me. And make no mistake, I've seen this happen a lot of times with these Chinese wives. It's not an empty threat. They, they do do it, and there's lots of videos online of guys complaining about it. I think uh, Tech Lead, if I'm not mistaken, a large YouTube channel with over a million subs, has several videos where he's talking about his wife stealing his child and basically taking off back to Asia. Now, back to our friend over here. So move to a state that's friendlier to fathers, consult with a lawyer to plan your strategy, let your lawyer know what her strategy is, and make sure that you take all the appropriate steps to ensure that you remain in your children's lives, that you can continue to parent them. A shared parenting plan is ideal, it's where the children spend about equal time with both parents. She's clearly batshit crazy. I don't care if she's narcissistic or what it is that the diagnosis might end up be, but she is a difficult woman. And a difficult woman in a marriage will become even more difficult in a divorce. The upshot of all that all is, well guess what? You're gonna be able to have sex again because you're not gonna be dealing with a sexless marriage type of situation. You're gonna be able to live your life on your terms. She's not gonna be able to tell you much of what to do, especially if you're in a state that's friendly to fathers, not hostile to war with fathers, must be friendly. Do that research first. And you just carry on living your life as a uh, divorced single dad with your two kids. Raise them as best as you can. Do not invite psychopath women into your life like our friend over here ever again. Doesn't matter how hot she is or what she's doing that the other girls didn't do. If she demonstrates red flags, you do not invite her into your life. Now you've mentioned one, two, and seven red flags. I don't know if you're referencing the ones in my list because there's 20 or you skipped three through six, but I guarantee she's got a lot more than just those three 
that you posted over there in your written request. That is my advice for you, get out. You will never ever find an opportunity to make an unhappy woman happy for you that does not have genuine burning desire. I talked about this, I believe it was chapter three in my book. You only ever want to deal with women that have genuine burning desire for you. Anything else is a pass. Anything else is a pass. You made the mistake of staying in a relationship and knocking up a woman that didn't have genuine burning desire for you because you already knew that she wasn't going to be intimate with you when you started to have sex with her and unloading to have a kid due to her demands, obviously. And I'm sure something to do with residency or a green card was in there somewhere. So guys, pay attention. Don't make a mistake like this guy. If you're this guy, I'm talking to you, obviously, get out. This is not gonna get better. You are not gonna find a way to make this better. She is not going to take any kind of therapy or counseling, and you putting your foot down won't change anything. In fact, you putting your foot down and trying to set boundaries will probably make things worse. Women like this don't respect boundaries. And had you vetted for that early on when you were dating with her, or dating her at the time, then you would have just said, I'm out. You're better off being alone than dealing with a psychopath like this. You are far better off being alone with no children than dealing with a psychopath like this because women like this will make your life absolutely miserable. Get out, run forest, run, go now. You guys leave a comment below, hit the like button for the algorithms and check out the top pinned comments for a bunch of useful stuff, including links to my book, the red flag chapter, and I have a divorce course as well. This is ideal for a guy in this type of situation because as you untie the knot, you need to understand what it is that she's going to be doing and planning as you divorce this crazy. There's also, not just in the course, about three hours of material that help you or guide you through much of the process, but there's also a monthly Zoom call and a community that's part of it as well, which you can get involved with other guys, and I'm there for 90 minutes twice a month taking Q&A questions from guys, so check that as well. Have an awesome day, peace out. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit, I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.